Hey guys, welcome to About Ukraine. Welcome to our channel. We're so glad that you're stopping by. And uh, today we are in south of Kiev in Demyevsky Rynok, which is this market space here. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. It's important if you like this content that you're getting from us. And uh, today I have a very important guest with me, a very important guest by the name of Jeff. Hi. I uh, haven't been in Ukraine for a long time, right? No, I came here at the beginning of September. Uh, and I've been uh, getting indoctrinated quickly, I think, to the culture. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so let's go take a walk. And um, I don't know, I I'm really interested to hear what are yeah. the things that really shocked you about Ukraine. I mean, pleasantly or unpleasantly, perhaps. Yeah. And um, you're thinking of staying here long term, right? Yeah, I think. I, I don't have any intention right now of like uh, leaving on any kind of timeline or, or staying here. Yeah. Um, generally, you know, I'm here on a three month uh, temporary resident permit and I see me staying here at least that long, if not longer. Mm -hmm. um, I'm learning to uh, really appreciate, I think, the people and the culture here. Um, there's a lot of things to get used to that are different than they were back in the States. But uh, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's not impossible to like overcome these little distractions, you, you might want to call them. Yeah. Yeah, what drew you to Ukraine? Um, I first learned about Ukraine when I started doing a little genealogy and, and learning about uh, my father's side of the family. And, and I learned that uh, about 170 years ago, um, they immigrated from southern Ukraine to the U.S. And so at that point, it was kind of like the seed was planted. So anytime I heard Ukraine, I would, you know, it perk my interest. And yeah. I would start to say, oh, wow, really? Okay. And uh, I started learning more about, um, you know, they yeah. have beautiful, beautiful ladies beautiful in Ukraine. Beautiful ladies. Um, and I think probably in general, just beautiful people in Ukraine. But I'm <laughs> more attracted to the opposite. Sex. Of course. Um, and now we're in the and, beautiful and, market. And now we're in the, yeah, now we're in the beautiful market where, you know, this is where the, uh, the older yeah. ladies are. <laughs> How many markets uh, have you been to in the U.S.? Like, I mean, in terms of, like, you go like to your this? neighborhood? I'm yeah. Not, nothing like this. I've, yeah. you know, everything, uh, you know, the, the meat that I purchased in the States is always on styrofoam <laughs> yeah, and wrapped yeah, yeah, in, yeah. Wrapped in uh, cellophane. Unique coming to Ukraine and being able to go through these markets and yeah. and find anything. Yeah. From do, do, do you feel like, I always feel a little apprehensive when it comes to buying something here because there's, look, you get like no like receipt you you right. don't know the prices right. they can, can they i can, return it if it doesn't fit they can charge you foreign prices you know yes. aren't you worried about that i i have been and i i think there have been times that maybe uh when i've been yeah. out alone even in say a kiosk in the mall yeah i i feel like maybe i was possibly overcharged for something but you know i think um I look at it more as it's it's my responsibility to learn the language and learn some of those things so that i will be able to uh, yeah. uh so how's the, how, how the uh, language uh, learning going? Uh, not so good. <laughs> I probably know about five words. Yeah, yeah. And probably three of those I can't say on video. Uh, this is what I call sandpaper, uh, toilet paper. You never buy that. It's like note, ceiling, it's note like to ceiling, self. Uh, yes. Note to self. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm telling you right now, avoid that. It, it's cheap. It's only like literally two dollars for a pack of uh, I don't know ten or something like that. Okay. No little. The extra. price is enti enticing, but uh, the result, <laughs> you will not be satisfied with, uh, with with your purchase. You may have a rash of problems. Of course. Station like this. Yeah, you get all your shopping done in one place. Right. And uh, the beauty of it is, it's getting colder now, and I think. Uh, this uh, market is on year round, yes? I, yeah, I think so. And I think they just carry more seasonal items as the, the season progresses or the year do, progresses. Do you have a, like a favorite type of uh, food? Um, you know, I love spicy food. So I've, I've loved like things like jalapeno peppers and it's been very hard to find these types of foods here. Wait, there's some, mm. uh, I think, no, yeah. More uh, like uh, pepper Just regular chili yeah. and it's marinated. So it's not going to yeah. be so spicy. I love Ukrainian food. Yeah. And um, you got to develop a taste for it because yeah. once you do, there's so much to discover. Yeah. So basically there are 
uh, different kinds of bazaars yeah. that are concentrated on a certain industry or um, product type. Like for example, the auto bazaar is a car right. bazaar, basically you get car parts. And then you have an electronics bazaar. But uh, these are, uh, I believe, remnants of the Soviet system. Oh, like okay. when, when you had the 90s, uh, you had a um, rapid influx of capitalism and private industry and people just set up uh, these giant uh, giant markets all over the place. For and themselves to make money for their yeah, families? Yeah, because there was, no, there was no official, you understand, there was no official representation of, like, let's say, Lara, right? Or, right. or, or Moscow Beach or any car. It emerged like a grassroots type of um, movement, right? To, to just satisfy need in a very quick way. Yeah. And I think that is the remnant of that. Uh, the, the old bazaars are just left over from the 90s and, and I think what's surprising when I like yeah. say when I hear that is that it's interesting to say that the Soviets didn't find that in some way counter to the the government system of ownership and kind of market economy it's interesting to hear that see certain things like this yeah. I had never known about and so by learning yeah it's it's it wasn't as closed as it yeah. as it appeared there were ways that people could be uh uh, ingenious and set up their own, you know, say auto bazaar or, or shop at a bazaar um, or sell fruit or, you know, shoes. Uh. Personally, I don't know how feasible it is to actually stand outside in the cold all day and do that, <laughs> but I heard uh, it's mostly um, out of necessity people do that. If they could, I'm sure yeah. they could get a better job. Uh, sure. Like pensions in Ukraine, very, yeah. very low for, for the older. Um, population uh, I think I've heard what things like thirty dollars a month fifty dollars a month maximum yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely so we're going down to Roshan's uh, giant factory but they've done a huge amount of renovations here and a huge amount of construction and they built a giant I think it's a giant um, skating rink and a pretty cool fountain and I've never been here before so it looks uh, but it looks really beautiful I mean, you know what? It looks better, more beautiful than it does in downtown Kiev. Because downtown Kiev has quite a lot of fountains. Right. Well, this looks really yeah, nice. It, it's so open here and, and not crowded. There's no ladders on the side of the, you know, the walkway here. Yeah. <laughs> we're not, we're just seeing, you know, yeah, this open, beautiful area. Mm -hmm. Little jazzy music playing, kids playing in the fountains, you know. There's a scooter, places to sit. It's, it's definitely a very, I would say, reminds me of home, you know, this, this kind of an atmosphere. So, uh, Jeff, yeah. I want to ask you a question, a big one. And that is, in your opinion, why do you think more Americans can't make the jump? You know, because everybody yeah. talks about yeah. Ukraine. You have everyone from uh, men seeking to find their second half. And you know what? That is a big part of men out there. Uh, you know, that's, that's how it is. Yeah. Uh, but you have other people that are unhappy with the, uh, the Western life. Yeah. They want an adventure. They want more freedom. They, they con are considering, uh, you know, other, other areas that, that, that will offer something that, you know, the West doesn't offer them. Or they, they feel, I don't know, they feel uh, not at home, let's say, at home. Right, right. And they want to they put something else. Yeah. And why I, don't they? Why don't they make the jump? Yeah, and, and I think a lot of those things could apply to me as far as like when I wanted to come here, researching on YouTube, you know, that's definitely um, been a huge help because you can get a wealth of opinions and a wealth of different uh, feedback on your, your inquiries and you can kind of weigh what works for you and what doesn't. Um, but I think like a lot of reasons why people don't come is that You've really got to make that that big step. You've got to decide, like, okay, I want to not necessarily give up citizenship for my country, but give up residency. Like, give up your house, mm -hmm. give up your car, give up your material yeah. belongings, and be willing to kind of live a little more minimalist. Mm -hmm. Come here to Ukraine, um, bring your money, you know, yeah. and, and it goes a lot further. But I think being able to let go of those roots and those fears of, what mm -hmm. the unknown is and I yeah. think that's probably what our job is right is to kind of educate people that, that it's it's very possible and it's it's mm -hmm. not a huge obstacle uh, you'll find bigger obstacles in Ukraine or even yeah. in the West <laughs> than you will trying to immigrate here um, immigration here is, is relatively easy it's things like getting driver's licenses yeah, yeah, or yeah. Uh, you know other other driver's things like license. that that are getting more... your uh, I find that getting your propiska is, is a foreign aspect to many people because like what is a propiska it's like an actual 
a slew of documents that tie you to a property. Okay. Even if you don't like uh, live there, and in. Uh, so this 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 word is the Ukrainian word for like setting your residence, your it, your registered yes. residence in it, Ukraine. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, I wanted to get a health insurance yeah. in a different uh, state, for example, province yeah. or state. Yeah. Uh, I showed them that I was getting three uh, bills to my name yeah. on, on that, to that address. And, and like a was, lease document? That, that was sufficient. Yeah. But here, that wouldn't it, be the case. It's I think a lot, they would yeah. want more paperwork. <laughs> I found more obstacles, yeah, because yeah. a lot of the owners didn't want to... What I hear is that they don't want to attach like a foreigner or, or somebody that's not doesn't have interest in the property. Yeah. They don't want to attach another name yeah. to their property and, and so you do find there's a lot of pushback um, I know I'm not registered at the address that yeah. I'm actually physically at because it's by a landlord and yeah, but this is, this is like uh, maybe number 20 on the list of things that foreigners yes. <laughs> have yeah, to worry about when yeah, coming right, here right right it was the, the one number of the... one thing the number one thing really is the, the mindset right you have yep. to you have to adopt the mindset of um, yep. at least mentally leaving you don't have to physically leave you know get rid of your uh, property i'm sure you can yeah. you can still keep track my, of my of property is coming over and stuff i'm shipping my property over okay but i think um like you say it's i think that mindset letting go yeah in terms real of real estate, estate letting go of cars real estate because i think just the obstacles of bringing those to ukraine um i, I know there's been many videos on this that it, it, it is really difficult and i think it's a lot easier to come here and buy a car here Bar, it, it lets you the, see the, yeah. also the environment that the car is going to be in, right? Um, you probably don't want to bring your, your Mazda Miata Cabriolet to Ukraine because the winters are very long, very yeah. wet, very cold. Yeah. And to have a, a convertible in, in Ukraine, it just wouldn't be a feasible thing to do. Mm, not really, but I don't know. I'm a fan of convertibles. <laughs> I think as a second car, it wouldn't be there so bad. Yeah, you, yeah, you, you, have yeah. to, you have to be careful of all the dust. And, all the, and the roads, and the road, uh, you know, yeah. the low clearance uh, yeah. it might be might be difficult. But yeah, I think the mindset, giving away the mindset of anything you're you're tied to back home that yeah. is holding you up from coming here. For sure. Yeah. So Jeff, yeah, uh, we are at this, I don't know, beautiful rink with no ice on it, but it looks like it could be a nice little skate park or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, there is a nice skate park in Videnha. They yeah, have a new yeah. skate park that's very interesting. But yeah, this would be great in the winter. Mm. Beautiful place to come and ice skate. Definitely, I think. I'll, I'll come down here for sure. This uh, it's cool. Even though I don't know how to skate too well, but but um, wait, wait, wait! You're from Canada. I I, and I never got into this whole hockey. Thing. Uh huh. It's, uh -huh. Um, I really never did. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, never really liked uh, skating. So um. Yeah, thanks for coming out and uh, and sharing your opinions and, and your insights about about uh, Ukraine and basically, yeah, you I'm, know, I'm learning quickly. Yeah, you know, all these different cu cultural uh, attributes that that we don't have in the West, and it's it's been it's, or is exciting, um, and I look forward to many more opportunities to. Uh, like have my eyes open to like new and interesting yeah, things definitely. in Ukraine. Oh, don't worry, you'll, you'll, you'll see plenty of that here. You're gonna <laughs> see so much of it. You're gonna be like, you're gonna be tired of getting your eyes open every every like yeah, few yeah. months. Yeah, and hopefully in the summer, you know, travel more and yeah. get to see other places and, and enjoy it much more. I think now that that falls really setting in, I think kind of hunkering down and, yeah. and getting ready to uh, deal with the long winter. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I hope yeah we, we can collaborate a little bit more later on. But yeah, yeah. thanks so much. And that was Jeff with me uh, from, uh, you're from Oregon, right? Yep, from Oregon. From Oregon really from from all Oregon. the way from that part of the world. Yes. And, uh, you know. It's possible. Ukraine, uh, Ukraine is uh, bringing people like Jeff out here. Yeah. <laughs> Attracting yeah. people out, pulling people out from the depths of the United States. <laughs> yes. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So, I uh, hope you like this video. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we're going to see you in the next one.